Now, uh, again, mid-tones. Did that blue before. I'm going to go to this red. I'm going to bring it a little desaturated. I'm going to come up just here. And uh, option delete, deselect. And you can see I just got more details in my phone reflection. That's really cool. I uh, click on layer seven. Curious. Okay. Good. If I turn off that green and that green. interesting okay sorry easily amused here number seven and now we're on simulated lights on the side so we're gonna and click that okay so this goes into a little bit of yellow orange if I come over here I'm gonna change this from a triad to a double complement. I kind of like that idea. I can bring in a little bit more warmth. I'm going to go with a super light cream color and command, uh, or sorry, option delete, deselect. And you can see it brings in a little bit of warmth on my uh, icy blue face and we get a little bit here. I, I rather like that. Okay. Uh, frame. Oops. That was layer seven, so we need to go here. Okay. Command click for the frame. And we choose our color. Um, I need some more warmth in this picture. But I want it to be very subtle. We're going to bring that pink in. And option, delete, deselect that. And click on layer 5. And these are going to be my highlights. So command, uh, click. And I'm going to say those. And again, we're bringing in some flesh tones with this cream color. Uh, option delete. Okay. And see how we're starting to build up this double complement. And it's very subtle. So I have a strong red blue. No, I don't know how I feel about that. And then I have just these subtle oranges and subtle greens coming in. Orange being the complement of blue and green being the complement of red. Go to layer four, mid-tones. Oops. Okay, now this is what happened. This is good. I accidentally held down option and clicked on it. That doesn't do anything to my image. All it does is it shows me what my selection is. But some of you might be, hey, wait, where's my image at? All I need to do is come up to the top, click on the RGB uh, channel, and it all goes back. Then I need to pay attention and hold down Command and click on my midtones. And oops, I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, these are mid-tones, so uh, go on, go here. I've got so much blue, I want to go back to this. Okay, I think that's a good mid-tone color. So we'll choose that, and then option delete. And some of you might be thinking, but Mr. Allen, I'm not seeing all of these loaded colors coming through uh, and why is that 
No, it's because Photoshop works like working with paper collages. Okay. Let me focus here for a minute. I'm going to choose this color from my shadows and option delete, deselect, and then layer two, we're almost done. And then click, these are all my skin tones. So we're gonna go here. Anything that has a skin tone, I'm gonna come, I am not that tan. I wouldn't even consider myself tan. I'm gonna really desaturate it though. Okay, and something like that. And then option delete it. Okay, deselect. All right, not too shabby. I can turn off that so I can see. All right, so those cool triangles I thought I was going to get, they're not showing up. I still cannot stand this white forehead that I've got going on, uh, that huge glare. And some some other issues. Um, in fact, I don't like any of this white that I have going on. Now, if I turn this off, all right, you can see a little bit of checkered pattern coming through. That's where the color is the thinnest. And so my layer one, which is just my black and white values, they're going to hold my, sh uh, my deepest shadows and highlights. They aren't affecting my image too much except for in the background it looks like. And that's what I want. Uh, if that layer is turned off, I want to see very little checkered pattern. Okay. But I can go through and start reordering these layers. For instance, my skin tones I want to see what it looks like up on top. Now that is rather horrible. Okay, not really keen on that. And I wonder, okay, if I turn off layer 16, that is where my highlights are at. Okay, now I just look like a very, 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 Hope person, and I really don't care for that color. So I can come and I can reorder these layers a little bit, working to get something that I like better. Now, one thing that I should have done that would help me keep track of these things was layering my or naming my layers the same as what my save selections were so that I knew exactly what it was. Right. I'm not going to go through and do that. That's something I'm going to remember for next time because I feel like I could be more efficient in my use of time so that I'm spending less on the computer and more doing the things that I enjoy, which is uh, creating photographs, not necessarily digitizing. Although this is one of my more favorite uh, um, projects because it has so many painterly things to it. All right, so I'm gonna I think what I'm going to do is put these back in the order they were in. And as I go through the next steps, I think it will uh, help. At this point, I want to save again. And... Um, and then I'm going to head over to the internet. So command tab, J 
to Google Chrome. And this time I'm going to go to Brush Easy, E E Z Y dot com. And we're going to be looking for some Photoshop brushes. And we want specific brushes. We don't want things like skulls or butterflies or capricorns, anything dealing with space. We want more abstract stuff like watercolor masks and um, not bricks in the wall. Wet and wild, maybe lens flares, possibly. Um, we don't care about patterns. Textures, some of these could be good. Maybe grass, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, untamed reflections could be cool. Cracked mud, wrapping paper, floral textures. That one might actually be fun um, for some of you girls. Uh, concrete textures, cool texture, what a name. Um, leaf textures could be cool. Uh, this kind of leaf where we don't see the shape. In fact, I'm going to click on that one. Um, so I'm going to download that. We're going to wait to one download and you'll see it load there. Once it finishes downloading, I can close this. Okay. And let's see if there's some other cool ones that fit that. Really not seeing anything there. These fabric damask patterns, they might be interesting. So you could download those. Masks used to be very popular. They're kind of, uh, they've run their course. My internet connection here is incredibly slow. So, I'm going to wait a minute. Now, I have several saved um, brush collections already installed on my computer. Um, you only have access to Photoshop's default brushes and although they have some nice ones uh, for this project it's sometimes better to have something uh, different more unique to your personality well how do you know if it's your personality well for heaven's sakes you are choosing the uh, brush based on what you like, I imagine, uh, if you think it looks cool. Therefore, it is showing your personality. It becomes an extension of you uh, in some form. All right. So ideally, let me go back to the home page on Brush Easy. Ideally, we would just click on Brush Category and you could go into grunge. I'm going to go into grunge, I think. And I want to um, I want to go actually, I'm going to go to art under abstract and see if they have any painterly brushes. Let's see what these watercolor Sure. I'll down download that. Free file while you automatically download. Still looking for the Try Adobe Stock and get 10 free. No thanks. Okay. While that is finishing downloading, I'm going to go back to my Photoshop. And then I need to open up those brushes. So actually, I need to be in my Finder. 
And if I go to downloads, here are my downloads for today. So there's my Damask, my Greenleaf, and this is the one that's downloading now. You'll see that they come in a zip file. Double click on that zip file to unzip it. And inside there you will see a .abr file. That stands for Adobe Brush. I'm going to double click on that. And you saw the little ghost image kind of start opening and then disappear. That means it has loaded in Photoshop. I'll show you how to tell that, how, how to make sure that that's happened in a moment. And then I can go to my free watercolor brushes. Okay, now if you get the unable to expand, just click OK. All right, it worked. All right, hopefully. Okay, now this is good. Sometimes they say it's a brush and they give you an image. What that is, is you can take that image and create a brush. I am not going to do that with you guys. So if this happens, if all of your download brushes are JPEGs, go back to Brush Easy and find some new ones. I'm not going to bother uh, with it. I'm just going to open up that one. Now, you said I told you that we would be able to tell if they loaded. Up here, along the top of your... Uh, Photoshop window, there's a little uh, carrot uh, triangle or yeah, that's pointing down. You're going to click on that and by default you're in Essentials. We're going to change this to Painting. All right. So you'll notice that my Layers palette has moved back over here. I have a brush presets. I have my can of brushes here. This is going to give us everything we need for these next steps, namely our layers and our brushes. All right. I'm going to open up my brushes and I'm going to actually put them here next to my brush presets. And then I'm going to take my layers and I'm going to dock it over here so that I can have both sides. Actually, I'm going to get rid of my swatches. I'm just going to move my brush up here. Okay. Now, I have to have my brush tool in order to see all of my brushes. To tell if my brush is loaded, I can just scroll through my list of brushes. Now, I like to collect brushes, like some people collect shoes, or I don't know what. So I've got snowflakes, and I have different brushes for different projects that I've done. Okay, there's my damask patterns. There's my watercolor patterns, okay? You will find yours. They will not be at the very bottom, but they will be towards the bottom. The ones that are at the bottom are these ones that look like airbrushes and big fancy paintbrushes and pencils and things like that. Okay. So I'm going to choose a brush. Let's go to... One of those damask patterns. Okay. Now if I, if I choose my brush and I turn off spacing, you can see right here this uh, image. This is what the brush is. Brushes in Photoshop work like stamps. If we turn on spacing, what this does is it makes it look like we are stamping that image over and over and over. And and the more we space it, the more it looks like a stamp. The less we space it, the more it starts to look like a brush. All right. and you can see that this brush has some very square edges. And I don't really care for how that goes. I can rotate 
this brush. I like that better. I can squish it a little bit, and I'm liking that. I can flip the X axis, I like that. The Y axis, I don't like that. And if I come over here, you can see how big that brush is. So that was while I was clicked on brush tip shape. Now if I come here to brush dynamics, I can change the size, jitter. So that means it's going to be irregular from one stamp mark to the next, meaning it will be bigger or smaller. My minimum diameter, I can change. I'm going to just leave that my angle. What I'm trying to do is create more irregularities and my roundness. I want to round those edges a little bit. It's not going to do it for me. Go like that. I can click on scattering. I can make it far apart or close together. Include the count. Leave that. Okay. And then using my bracket keys next to the letter P, I can make my brush smaller with the bracket on the left and larger with the bracket on the right. I'm going to go smaller for this instance. I am working on layer 16. Now if I turn it off and on, I can see what layer 16 is. I can also do this, turn that on, and I can, oops, not that one, my black and white. I can also see it that way. Uh, this is a little easier to see because it is that uh, kind of uh, light gray color. I'm going to work with all of my layers on because I'm focused on the overall image and not what each layer is doing. So I click on layer 16, I'm going to create a mask. That way, if I make a mistake, I can just fix it with my mask. Okay, so using this brush, I'm going to start erasing parts, painting with black on the mask. But I need to change the opacity. Anything between 20 and 60% works. I like somewhere in the mid to low 40 range. Sometimes I'll go lighter, sometimes I'll go heavier. Okay, so then I can kind of erase some of this area and I can get rid of those glaring white issues that I've seen. I'm actually going to go a little bit more pale here. Let me bring back some of that. Get rid of some of those highlights and those highlights and those highlights and that highlight. Okay, maybe that. Maybe a little bit there. Okay, so I like what I've done there. All right, now I go to my next layer. I create a layer mask, but I want a different brush. I want to use several different brushes. So I click back on brush tip shape. I choose a new brush. Okay, now I can go through and adjust these. To fit my project better and what I like. Now that brush is really big, so I'm gonna go small. I want to turn this layer off and on real quick to kind of see where I'm at. And I'm going to go a little bit lower than 38 again, down to 31. Make my brush a little smaller. And I want to get rid of some of the iciness in my cheeks here. But you can see that some of that blue is left behind, but it is transparent. So it is 
darkening up the color underneath, which happens to be kind of a darker tan-ish color. All right. Lighten that up just a little bit more. Okay. And that one. All right. Now I go back to my layers, create a new mask. I'm going to get a new brush. Not oh, that one. Not oh, that one. I hate these square edges. If you want to use one with square edges, that's fine. I don't really care for them, Pers you know, for my personal projects. It's not saying that you can't make it work. Okay, I like that better. Okay, this layer is these ugly shadows. All right, so I'm going to work through my hair really quick on that one. I'm not too concerned. Okay, I am. I'm going to drop my brush even more. Now I went down to 12. Every time I erase, I'm erasing only 12% of what is there. I still want that blue there. I just don't want it to be so heavy. Just gonna go through. And we're just masking these areas out with our brush. Okay. I think that's looking cool. Maybe take a little bit more blue from there. And a little bit more from my eye. Is that even in my eye? Yeah, it is. Maybe. That opacity up a little bit there. Okay. Now, anytime if you want to work in very small detailed areas, oops, you can zoom in, make your brush smaller. I'm going to paint some of this blue back in part of that. Okay. And then to zoom out, Command Zero fills the frame. All right, new brush. Now you'll notice that I'm not messing with the shape dynamics and scattering too much at this point. Part of that's just because I want to quickly get through this demo. The other is I just don't need to worry about it. I'm gonna look and see where that color was. Okay, so this is more shadow stuff going on and adjust this a little bit I don't like that shadow being so heavy get rid of that in there Big. I'm going to turn off spacing and shape dynamics and scattering. Now the reason I'm doing that is I am just stamping this one part of oops, the layer. I'm not moving my mouse. 
All right. So if we zoom in, let's see, can we see any edges to all of that? Not too much. That's good. All right. I'm going to turn back my spacing, my shape, and my scattering. This and this. All right, and a little bit of that. Go back here, we are 12. This is my sweatshirt. I'm gonna choose a new brush. And a mask. All right. Now by changing the size, I can address different detail issues. Okay. That's what I want to focus on. Red is a very strong color visually and it will still hold its weight even though I have toned it way down. Okay, this layer, that's the red in the reflection. I'm gonna leave that one. All right, now I'm starting to get to where I can't even discern what certain layers are. If I take this up to the top. Okay, these are the details here in this. I wanna get rid of this other stuff around it. Actually, so I'm gonna drag this to the top, I think. This is covering up the details. So what I want to do is with my brush, I'm going to uncover some of these details here. Oops, except for, I didn't create a mask, so I was painting brown there. All right. Okay, I think that will give me what I want. All I wonder if we did something similar. Okay. All right, so now we're starting to get into some really subtle detail issues. And we just have to start being smart about these things. All right. I'm going to come up here, this brush, make it big, we're going to make a mask, 